Assalamualaikum and good morning everyone. We are from the account executive team and today we will be presenting our finding on segmental reporting and interim reporting of Oriental Holdings per Hive. But before that, allow me to take a moment to introduce myself. My name is Reza Ben Abdurrahim and today I will be presenting on the company's background, the advantages and disadvantages of segmental reporting. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Ali Aisha binti Karazaman and I'm going to present on management approach which affects us to consider having a segment reporting, type of segment and chief of decision making and its responsibilities. Hi, Assalamualaikum. My name is Nuri Jazina binti Mu'arif. I'm going to present on the report use of segment report which comprises our process to identify the reportable segment and non-reportable segment, the application of 10% and 75% threshold test, and construct a new segment report for rental holdings per head. Assalamualaikum. My name is Noor Adilah Binti Yusuf and I'm going to present basis of preparation, accounting policies, and the type of interim report. My name is Farah Bati Fazim. I will be presenting the period for each statement and proposed adjustment. Oriental Holdings Berhad is a multinational conglomerate with businesses branching into automotive, plastic, hotels and resorts, plantation, investment holdings, investment properties, and healthcare. These businesses largely operate within the Asia Pacific region in countries such as Malaysia, Indonesia, Singapore. Thailand, Brunei, Australia, New Zealand, United Kingdom, Vietnamese, and Mauritius. The group was first established in December 24, 1963, and it was later brought public in February 22, 1974. It is also listed on Bursa Malaysia Securities Per on March 10, 1964. Oriental Holdings Per vision is to achieve sustainable growth while enhancing shareholders' value. On the other hand, their mission is to be a highly competitive organization through the use of innovation and to achieve continuous improvements in their business. Next, I would like to explain about management approach used by Orishi Holdings Berhad from the perspective of factors to consider having a segment reporting. There are three factors which are nature of business activities, the assistant manager responsible for the activities, and the information presented to the board of directors. The first one is the nature of business activities, which is the entity has the primary goal of increasing profits in every activity that is carried out. As we know, Orishi Holdings Berhad engage in the provision of products and services such as automotive and related products, plastic products, hotels and resorts, plantation, investment holding, investment properties, and trading of building materials products, and healthcare. Move on to the second factor which is the assistance of managers responsible for the activities. Every of the operating segment generally has a segment manager who will become directly accountable to and maintain the regular contact with the chief of decision making to make discussion, planning and focus operating activities for each segment and to view the financial result. Orisha Holdings Berhad is known as a large company in the Asia region, thus every segment is going to manage by manager directors who is in responsible for the overall strategy and also the managing directors will be the middleman to deal with the chief of decision making on a regular basis. The last factor is the information presented to the board of directors. The chief of decision making have to refer to the reports that has been evaluated by board of directors because it consists of reliable information regarding the overall performance and financial position of the company. Hence, it helps the chief of decision making to make wise decisions to improve and gain in the profit maximization of the Orsha Holdings per head. There are two types of segments which are the business segment and geographical segment. The business segment is divided into seven segments. The first one is automotive and related products, focus on motor vehicles retailer and distributor, manufacture of engines, seats and other related parts as well as trader of spare parts, accessories and related component parts. Second, plastic products focus on the manufacture assembly and distribution of plastic component parts, manufacture of plastic technical and industrial goods and equipment. 
Third, hotels and resorts. Focus on managing the hotels and resorts. Fourth, plantation comprise the cultivation of oil palm. Fifth, investment holding which is consists of investment in shares and bonds and the letting of properties and leasing companies. Six, investment properties and trading of building material products which focus on providing property development, manufacture of wire netting, wire mesh, prop wire, well mesh, nails and building materials, also distributor of cement and manufacturer and dealer of concrete products. Last but not least, healthcare that provide medical center, nursing college and integrated lifestyle retail pharmacy. For the geographical segment, Orsha Holdings Burhat has running its business in Asia-Pacific countries which is in Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, Brunei, Australia, Thailand, Vietnam, Mauritius, United Kingdom and the People's Republic of China. Move on to Chief of Decision Making and its responsibilities. Chief of Decision Making is the individual or group of individuals that are responsible for the allocation of resources and assessing the performance of the operating segment of the company. Their responsibility is to develop strategic decisions for each segment. Chief of Decision Making of Orange Holdings Burhat is held by executive directors and an executive chairman. As we can see on the slide, Dr. Robo Wall Glumcom is in charge of the automotive and related products and plastic product segment. Ms. Tan Kang Hui is in charge of the hotels and resort segment. Next, Dato Loh Kian Chong and Dato Sui Mlu Sotong are in charge of plantation, investment and development of properties and investment properties and trading of building material product segment. Meanwhile, Dato Sri Dato Wira Tan Hui Jing is in charge of healthcare segment. <music> Alright, now how to identify whether it is reportable segment or non-reportable segment? Let me explain. There are two steps that we have to do. The segment identification begins with quantitative threshold test. According to MFRSA, once an operating segment has been identified, the entity shall report separately information on an operating segment if it meets any of the following quantitative thresholds, which is by computing 10% threshold test. There are three bases that we can use, which is firstly revenue basis, where its reported revenue from external and inter segment is 10% or more of the combined revenue from internal and external of all operating segments. Secondly, based on results of profit, where its reported profit or loss is 10% or more of the greater in absolute amount of if the combined profit of all operating segments that did not report a loss and the combined loss of all operating segments that reported a loss. And lastly, by using asset spaces, where its assets are 10% or more of the combined assets of all operating segments. Then how can you calculate? Okay, you have to take the amount of each operating segment and divide it by total amount of operating segment and times by 100. So from this, we can conclude that if the percentage exceeds 10%, then it is a reportable segment. Meanwhile, if the percentage is less than 10%, then it is not a reportable segment. Okay, now what happens if an operating segment does not meet any of the quantitative threshold tests? The management may designate the segment to be a reportable segment if it believes that information about the segment would be useful to users of the financial statements. Also, an entity may combine two or more operating segments that individually do not meet the quantitative thresholds to produce a reportable segment only if the operating segments have similar economic characteristics and share a majority of the aggregation criteria. After the initial identification, we have to compute the 75% rule. The total external revenue reported by operating segments is at least 75% of the entity's total revenue. MFRSA states that if the 75% rule is not met, then additional operating segments should be identified as reportable segments even if they do not meet their quantitative thresholds until at least 75% of entity's total external revenue is included in its reportable segment. So how to calculate? You have to divide the total external revenue of all reportable segments and uh, with total revenue of all operating segments and times 100. 
the information about all the business activities and operating segments that are not reportable shall be combined and disclosed in an all other segments category separately from other reconciliation items in the reconciliations required. The sources of the revenue included in the all other segments category shall be described. Based on the annual report of Oriental Holdings per head, there are seven operating segments which are automotive related products, plastic products, hotel and resorts, plantation, investment holding, investment properties and trading of building material products, and also healthcare. For this case, Oriental Holdings per head decided to measure its operating segments by computing the 10% threshold test using asset spaces. Therefore, it will be computed based on its segment assets. After identifying the reportable segments, the 75% rule will be conducted. So, this is the extract segmental report of its segment assets as per Oriental Holdings per head annual report. We're going to use the data here to compute the 10% threshold test. Let's look at the calculation beside me here. The calculation is by dividing the total assets of all seg of each segment with total assets of all operating segments. Based on the table, we can conclude that there are 5 reputable segments and out of several reputable segments that satisfy the 10% threshold test which comprises of automotive and related products, hotel and resorts, plantation, investment holding, and investment properties and trading of building material products with 32%, 10.52%, 28.31%, 11.67% and 10.88% respectively. Since the other two operating segments, which are plastic products and healthcare, did not satisfy the 10% threshold test, which is with only 4.41% and 2.21%, therefore, it will be combined together and disclosed as all other segments category in the segmental report. Then, let's move on to the next step, minimum number of reportable segments, which is by computing the 75% rule. The external revenue of five reportable segments, amounting RM2998450 billion, will be divided by total external revenue of operating segments, amounting to RM2660 uh, billion and times per 100. Oriental holdings per head meets the 75% rule since the percentage is more than 75%, which is 91.81%. Now, here is the Oriental holding per head's reported segmental report. It provides its total revenue, total results, and total assets. As shown here, there are five reputable segments, which are automotive and related products, hotel and resorts, plantation, investment holding, and investment properties and trading on building material products. Meanwhile, as you can see here, the other two non reportable segments, which are plastic products and healthcare, will be combined into one and disclosed under all other segments as it fails to meet the 10% threshold test requirement using the asset spaces. Uh, moreover, since the 75% test has been satisfied by the company of 91.81%, Oriental Holding Berhad may simply ignore the plastic products and healthcare segments. Next, let's discuss the advantages and disadvantages of segment reporting. Objectively speaking, there are four main benefits. First of which is that it allows for the optimal and efficient use of company resources. Secondly, it also helps in identifying the most profitable units and products per company, while at the same time figuring out which one is the worst performing one. Furthermore, it also helps in attracting potential investors. And lastly, it helps financial analysts to better understand and comprehend the financial statements of the company. Although there are numerous benefits to segment reporting, there are also some downsides to it. For instance, segment reporting is a time-consuming process. On top of that, the data being presented may be misinterpreted by its users, typically investors and creditors. Furthermore, the method for reporting inter-segment transactions differs within each organization, which makes it harder for users to better understand the company's financial standings. Part B Interim Report Basis of preparation, it has been prepared in accordance with Malaysian Financial Reporting Standard and the Requirement of Companies Act 2016 in Malaysia. 
Next, two accounting policy used in preparing the interim report. Number one is MFRS 140 investment property, owned and measured initially and subsequently at cost. Costs include expenditure that is attributable to the acquisition of IP, the cost of self-contracted IP to a working condition for their intended use, and capitalized borrowing costs, rights of use asset held under the contract that meets the definition of IP. Deposition is charged to profit or loss and straight line basis over the estimated useful life 50 years for building. Rights of use asset are depreciated over the lease term and freehold line is not depreciated. Capital work in progress are not depreciated until the assets are ready for the intended use. An investment property is de-recognized on its disposal and when it is permanently withdrawn from use and no future economic benefit are expected from its disposal. The difference between the net disposal profit and the carrying amount is de-recognized in the profit or loss in the period in which the item is de-recognized. Number two is earning per ordinary stock. Basic EPS is calculated by dividing the profit or loss attributable to an ordinary stockholder of the company by the weighted average number of ordinary stockholders standing during the period, adjusted for own stock health. Next is type of interim report that prepared by company is the first one is condensed income statement, condensed statement of comprehensive income, condensed statements of financial position, consolidated statement of changes in equity, and condensed statements of cash flow. Now, I will be presenting the period for the current and comparative of each statement prepared by the company. For your information, the year ended for Oriental Holding Bahar is at the end of the year, which is December 31st. The first quarter is on March 31st, second quarter is on June 30th, third quarter is on September 30th, and the fourth quarter is on December 31st. For the statement of financial position or SOFP, at the end of the current injury reporting period is 3 months from 1st October 2021 until 31st December 2021. And for the comparative SOFP of the immediate preceding financial year reporting period is 12 months from 1st January 2020 until 31st December 2020. For the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income or SOPL and OG, for the current interim reporting period is 3 months from 1st October 2021 until 31st December 2021. The cumulative of SOPL and OG for the current financial year to date reporting period is 12 months from 1st January 2021 until 31st December 2021. The comparative of SOPL and OG of current reporting period is 3 months from 1st October 2020 until 31st December 2020. Lastly, the comparative SOPL and OG of immediate preceding financial year to the reporting period is 12 months from 1st January 2020 until 31st December 2020. Next, for the statement of cash flow or SOCF, for the current entry reporting period is 12 months from 1st January 2021 until 31st December 2021. The comparative SOCF of current reporting period is 12 months from 1st January 2020 until 31st December 2020. Last but not least, for the statement of changes in equity or SOCHE, the cumulative for the current financial year to date reporting period is 12 months from 1st January 2021 until 31st December 2021. And the comparative SOCHE of immediate preceding financial year to date reporting period is 12 months from 1st January 2020 until 31st December 2020. Next is proposed two adjustments for the company. The first adjustment is about trade receivable. As at 31st December 2021, the gross amount of trade receivable is 357 million 770,000 ringgit. However, Oriental Haji Berhad estimated that 90% will be the collectible amount. So, the amount that needs to be reported by the company is at ringgit. For the second adjustment is about inventories. As at 31st December 2021, the cost of inventories is ringgit. Meanwhile, the net realizable value is at ringgit. According to MFRS 102, the value of inventories that need to be recorded by the company must add lower of cost and net realizable value. So, as at 31st December 2021, the value of inventories of Oriental Holding Bahar is at 210,789,000 ringgit, which is at net realizable value. In conclusion, let me show you the effect of before and after adjustment for the extract statement of financial position Oriental Holding Bahar as at 31st December 2021. 
For the trade receivable, 90% of the collectible amount and the remaining of the uncollectible amount, which is amounted at 35 million 777,000 ringgit, will be deducted against the gross amount 357 million 770,000 ringgit, which resulted in estimated amount of trade receivable of 331 million 993,000 ringgit. Next, the effect of the inventories. Due to adoption of MFRS 102, the company need to recognize the inventories at lower of cost and net realizable value. So, the value of inventories will be decreased by 28,239 ringgit. That's all from us. Thank you.